Hey, and welcome to the highlights of episode number 149 with Brendan Kane. Some of my favorite parts of this episode were when he shares how to create epic and viral content on a low budget, how to get people to share your content, and why you need to over-deliver and go above and beyond. His tips and tricks are amazing and not to be missed. And there is so much more wisdom, inspiration, and knowledge that you get in the full episode. So to listen to the full podcast and get all the info in the show notes, head on over to melissaambrosini.com forward slash 149 right now. Brendan, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you here today. We've not had anyone like you on the show. And your new book, Zero to One Million Followers, is out now, which is very exciting. Congratulations on an amazing book. But before we dive into that and spill all the beans on how to go from zero to a million followers, can you tell us about your journey and how you got to where you are today doing the work that you now do? My journey as an entrepreneur, because I get asked that that question a lot, is how early on did I know I was an entrepreneur? And just thinking back on it, the first kind of memory that comes to mind is me as a little kid picking up my toys and walking around the neighborhood and banging on doors and trying to sell my toys to neighbors' kids. Looking back on it, I didn't know that I was an entrepreneur at the time, but I think that that was the earliest stage of of me setting on this path. And I think that where the the current iteration of it really started was in college. So I went to film school to learn the business side of film and quickly realized that they don't teach you anything about business in film school. So I figured the best way to learn about business is is to start your own. So in college, I started three internet companies really just to learn and experiment because it's the most cost-efficient way to start businesses at the time, and it still holds true today. So when I moved out to LA to pursue a career in film back in 2005, it's when the entertainment industry started to reawaken to digital after the dot-com bust. So basically, I had taken that experience starting those internet companies in college to really get my foot in the door and to forge connection, get projects, and to really stand out because I'm of of the mindset that you have to be able to offer offer something different and valuable to, to other people in order to really forge strong connections. So the first part of my career, I started off in entertainment, managing digital divisions for two movie studios and overseeing the theatrical releases of films ranging from 15 to $100 million budgets, which also led to working directly with actors and directors on how to further syndicate their brand. But what I realized is the corporate structure and corporate environment really wasn't fit for me. And I think that that's where I really started to reawaken to the ideas of what an entrepreneur is and and what I was really set out to do. So I left working in the studio system and actually started building my own technology platforms and businesses and went back and started licensing them to major media companies such as MTV, Viacom, Yahoo, and Vice. And those partnerships opened up the opportunity to work with some of the, the largest celebrities in the world. So I had the good fortune of building technology platforms for the likes of Taylor Swift and Rihanna and professional athletes and and other people. And uh, did that for about three or four years and learned a lot from that. And then got involved with a social paid optimization firm very early on. And what we would do at that company is we were optimizing spend on social advertising platforms like Facebook's advertising platform, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, and that was really an eye-opening experience because we were doing this for the, the some of the largest corporations and brands in the world. And I saw this reoccurring theme where we had we would have a huge brand come to us and say, "Here's a piece of content that we would spend. They would spend hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars on production, and then they would want to spend another million dollars, you know, promoting it to a specific demographic. So let's just say it's females, thirty-five to fifty years old. And when you would ask them, "Well, how do you know that this piece of content is actually going to resonate?" with this audience to the tune of risking all this money, nine times out of 10, they didn't have the analytics or data to support that decision. So I kept seeing this over and over again. And I thought there's got to be a better way of going about this. Because if you're a huge brand that has tremendous budgets to work with, yes, you can fail a bunch of times and still move forward and find success. But what about the rest of us? What about people that don't have those huge marketing budgets? So I went off and started building a set of 
testing methodologies and predictive calculations on top of the Facebook and Instagram platform that would allow me to test content at scale and really understand what content formats, themes, stories resonate for a specific audience, whether you're an individual, a small business, or or even a big brand or corporation. So I went back to working with professional athletes and celebrities and using this system to help grow their global followings and was seeing success there as well. And then it seeded another idea in my head. It's like, well, this is great for a huge corporation, a huge brand or celebrity, which I spent the better part of my career working on. But what about people starting from scratch? What about people starting from zero? Is could I help them grow with everything that I had learned over the years? And I knew the only way to really understand whether or not it was possible was to go and run an experiment. So I figured who would be the best person to run that experiment on. And I thought, why not myself? And that's where the the million followers in 30 days came from. Really, I wanted to see, could I take all of the learnings that I had generated over the years and, and apply it to people that are starting from scratch, that are trying to get their brand or their voice out there? Because I truly believe, as you do, that there's people that can transform the world. They just need a platform or a stage to do so. Absolutely. So what are some of the key learnings that you got from working with Taylor Swift and Rihanna and people like that? Yeah. So what few people realize about Taylor Swift is that she built her fan base one by one herself. In the very beginning, she didn't have a huge record label behind her. She didn't have millions of dollars of marketing budget. It was literally herself growing her fan base one by one. And what made her so powerful and so brilliant is she understood the value of fostering one-to-one communication with fans. She understood that each time that she signed an autograph, each time she took a photo with a fan, or each time she responded to a comment online, not only did it turn that fan into a fan for life, but it also turned that fan into a brand advocate, somebody that was now willing to share Taylor's music, Taylor's message, and Taylor's content with everybody they knew. And because this was happening at a time when social platforms were becoming an integral part of everyday teenager life, when she created these new brand advocates, they were no longer just sharing it with three to four of their closest friends. They were now sharing it on their social profiles so that all of their social connections could be exposed to Taylor's content and music. And that's what made her so effective is she understood that value of essentially building this army of brand advocates that were just going to fuel her message for her globally. What about for someone listening who is like, okay, cool, but what if I don't have the budget to hire Brendan or to, you know, full production videos and things like that? What is your advice to those people? I would just start by looking at people that you admire. Look at people in the space that you're in, whatever that business is, and find the people that are having success with content. And what I mean by that is go to their social profiles, whether that's Facebook and Instagram or Twitter, and go through their feeds and look at the content that is being shared at a high velocity, that's generating a significant amount of engagement versus the content that's not generating that engagement. And use that as basically your school. Like Just go and watch as many videos as possible, as much content as possible from the people that are in your space that are having success. And then just try and reverse engineer it is if you just follow the guidelines and and follow what's working, that's going to put you light years ahead of other people. Like I can't tell you how many people just don't do the homework, don't do the research. And when you talk about lack of budget, the best way to really maximize that opportunity, and I do think it's an opportunity because it makes you work a little bit harder and look work a little bit smarter, is how can I get people to share my message for me? Because that's the ultimate way to avoid having to advertise. That's the ultimate way of having not to pay for for marketing dollars. So again, just really start with what are the people around you doing that's successful? Reverse engineer it and then figure out how to, to package that in your own way. So you mentioned getting people to share your content. How do we do that? So there's two ways that I look at that. So the first way, let's just say you're starting out on Facebook and you only have a hundred friends. I mean, most people have like three or 400 friends, but how can you first put a piece of content on your, your personal page and get them to share it? Like, because if you can't get your inner circle, people that know you to share your content, then your content's not good enough. I would just put it out organically and just, here's a video for my product and just see how, uh, how many people share it and who shares it. And then you can go back and ask the people that shared it. Like, what was it about the video that you really liked? The next element of that is 
and, and I always tell people this that are just starting out is don't try and create the traffic from scratch. Go where the traffic is. So it's how can you take your core message, your core content, find distribution outlets that need your content and then forge relationships and forge connections with them. It's what I did in the movie industry very early on is I formed relationships with every single movie website and movie blog out there and and through unique events for them or gave them exclusive content, brought them on set because I knew forging that relationship would give us distribution outlets to get our content out there. So you've got to make a list of every place that has traffic that's reaching your audience currently and then think about, okay, how can I provide value to those places through the content that I'm producing. Because again, you can't just approach a website or a social channel or an influencer and just say, hey, will you post my content? Because then it's then they know you're just trying to get something out of them versus how can you provide value to them through your content? So it's really about building these authentic relationships and offering value to them. It's not about asking, can you share? Can you share? It's about building these really beautiful friendships and relationships and offering your services to them. And going from there, I think that's really beautiful and such a powerful thing that we can all do. Yeah, I think you you, you keep bringing up a great word that I think that everybody should really resonate on, and that is authenticity. It's like, yes, you're building a brand. Yes, you're building a business. Yes, you're trying to sell a product, but you need to be authentic about it. Yes, you can do short-term gains and generate short-term revenue by trying to trick people into buying something or trying to just create a piece of content that goes viral once, but you're not going to build a a long-term brand. Like Again, going back to Taylor Swift is her signing autographs and taking photos with fans or responding to comments. Like That's authentic to who she is. She loves her fans. She loves what she does. And there's, there's multiple stories of this, but like one story with Taylor is she was doing a an autograph signing and her lucky number is 13. So she said, I'm going to do a 13 hour autograph signing. And like 3000 people showed up to this and she ended up staying for 18 hours. Again, it wasn't a, a PR stunt. It wasn't a gimmick. It's because she truly is that authentic person. Now I'm not saying to everybody out there, you need to do autograph signings because that's not relevant to everybody, but that's the type of mindset Does it have to be quote unquote pretty? You know, what are your thoughts on aesthetics and branding? Is there a difference between aesthetics and branding? Going back to doing research and homework and and finding people that are having success on social, but also match kind of the message that you want to convey to the world. So let's just say there's an Instagram account that has 10 million followers, but you look at their photos, you look at their content. And you're like, yeah, that's great, but I don't really resonate with that. I would never advise somebody to go against what they're feeling in their gut and do something that doesn't ring true to them. Content consistency and content format is super critical. So who are the people that are producing content that you admire that are having success? Now, there are so many different ways to go about it. Is, is, and there's so many strategies to growth and there's so many strategies to building a business. It's really finding the ones that that resonate for you and then going all in on that and making sure that you can do it at a level that is going to generate that virality, generate that shareability, generate that growth and, and hitting your key business goals and aspirations. Right. Love it. And so is it different for each platform or is there like generic rules across Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, or you know, are they completely different? Yes, each one each one's completely different in terms of how people use it. Sometimes you can use content across different platforms. So the way that I look at it is, first off, YouTube is long-form consumption. So that's one of the, the true benefits of YouTube is you can get people to tune in for a longer period of time. People are willing to sit there for 5, 10, 15 minutes and watch a video. In addition to the fact is, is YouTube is really a search-oriented platform. So people are searching for content and essentially just shows you how people are using that platform. Versus when you look at Facebook and Instagram, both of those are short-form consumption platforms. So knowing those consumption behaviors, designing your content for each of those. So Facebook is more of a democratic viral platform where it's just about creating content that is going to get to the right people and then they'll share it out from there. Versus Instagram is syndicating content out to different channels and driving traffic back in. 
So I look at the different channels and, and how each of the consumption behavior works, and then I design a content strategy around that. But with that said, is you can use the same piece of content and just package it different ways. So really just understanding how people are using each, each platform and then designing a content strategy and creating content for each one. So how do you leverage social to grow your brand? Yeah, so I, I've leveraged it in a very specific, unique way. So I leverage my social brand and the, the social following that I created to get a publishing deal and to speak around the world. So mine is, is done in a unique way, but there's other ways that you can go about it. Like there's ways where you can leverage social to drive a tremendous amount of traffic out to a website or to a podcast or to a newsletter. Because what I've learned from people that are far smarter than me is building a brand just doesn't mean being on social. You need to be on as many platforms as possible so people really see you as a real tangible brand. So it's really about how you can leverage social to build your overall business. So just being really strategic and smart about how many different outlets can you get your voice heard, get your content out there, uh, so you can get a holistic approach to, to building a solid foundation for your brand. Love it. You've spoken a lot about value and that being the only thing to build your brand or business. So can you just touch on what does that mean, value, giving value? To me, it's about how am I providing value to the other person on the other side of the table? So for example, if you're sitting on the other side of the table of a, a Taylor Swift or a major CEO or somebody that you're trying to foster a relationship with is first, you've got to understand that people at a high level, they're getting approached a hundred times a day. And every person is approaching them with a the mindset of how do I get something out of this person? Whereas I take the reverse approach is how do I understand who this person is? How do I understand what they need, whether that is my product or service or something else, so that I can provide value through what my specific skill sets are, what I am good at. And it's the same goes for just a product or a service. Is most people go into a meeting or creating a piece of content or advertising or marketing with how can I sell this product versus the reverse side of that is how can I provide the most value to my audience through my product or service? So to give you an example is when we built that paid social optimization firm, the reason that we were so successful in closing huge deals and closing companies like a Disney and Xbox, Microsoft and Netflix is that we would go into these meetings and really understand who we were talking to. Were we talking to a CEO? Were we talking to somebody in middle management? Were we talking to the VP of marketing? And then diving into a bunch of questions of understanding what their pain points are, what, what was working for them, what wasn't working for them. Before we even talked about what we were there for, we got a firm understanding of who the person was. And then once we had that firm understanding, we spoke to the service that we could provide that was going to provide the most value to alleviate the pain points that they have in addition to achieving their specific goals and objectives. Now, so using yourself as a human guinea pig, you dove into Facebook and you generated zero to a million followers in 100 countries in 30 days, which, by the way, amazing. What was the first step you took? I developed this process over three and a half years, you know, because of coming out of that media company and seeing the mismanagement of spend of our own content and marketing. Again, I, I worked with celebrities and journalists test, testing their content to really get a firm understanding of, of what works, what doesn't work, but also to actually just develop the system that I use, the process that I use in order to do it. The first step I took is, okay, what are the content formats that I want to push out there to get people to follow and engage a brand that they've never been exposed to? So I made a list of those content formats. So it was travel photos from unique places I've been over the world. It was inspirational quotes. I first started with inspirational quotes of others, and then I migrated to inspirational quotes of myself. I had created some test podcast interviews, so I packaged that content. I tested comedic-based content. I tested political-based content. But again, that first step to answer your question is making a list of all of those content formats or content themes I wanted to, to test. And then the next step was actually creating that low-cost proof of concept of each one of those and then the third was actually just going off and, and testing those. 